of all days, and very well done for whoever organised this, is the seven-year anniversary of a certain best ever ODI figures wait, wait, of wait, six wait, 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 before for you four. has gone running away. Where is she? She's coming back. I think she's got... And she has, ladies and gentlemen, the <laughs> ball. <have> the <laughs> Kookaburra white ball used. A Stuart Minnie took the best ever ODI figures, six for four against Bangladesh. And I tell you what, I'm going to let Stuart talk us through it because... The first two wickets, let's face it, they're lucky ones. Those who haven't seen, <laughs> down the leg side, he's got lucky with a, with a couple early doors. Looseners from a seamer. But the next four are absolute belters. That must be so good, thinking back to that day seven years ago, Stu. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was only my third game, you know, uh, for my country at that time. I was really nervous because I hadn't played three in a row as yet. And I got that opportunity up in the second ODI. Uh, and hence, obviously, you can tell the ball is still brand new. So we didn't ball that much <laughs> on that surface. Uh, we just uh, kind of we batted poorly um, at the start of that game and didn't have too many runs in, you know, in the bank. And uh, when we went in into that into that break, it wasn't even a lunch break because we were all out in like an hour and a half. Yeah. So we we just spoke about about bowling good lengths and good test lengths, you know, because the pitch had something in it and there was a bit of rain around. So we came on and off again couple of times and um, obviously it, it spiced in the wicket a bit. Uh, there was a bit of kick, you know, just a bit of a movement and it suited my bowling to be honest on that day. Uh, if uh, I would have never thought in my life that I would even get two wickets in Dhaka, you know, the, the, how flat the wickets are there. Yeah. But just okay. something something happened that day and, and the wickets really, you know, had some juice in it. And as you said, the first two wickets were 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 well, poor. <laughs> I mean, I tried to get the ball in the right areas. I was just trying to get my line and length going. But uh, I think once I found out that, you know, that conditions were helping me a bit, I went back to how I bowled back in Ranji Trophy and back in India, uh, where my job was just to just bowl tight lines and lengths and try and not give anything away to, to batsmen. And that's what I just went out and did that day. And Mayanti, do you remember where you were on that day when these wickets were taking place? Yeah, we, we were hosting. We, the our network I was working with had the rights to that match. So I was there in studio. And um, I think actually I'd, I'd finished for the day because I wasn't doing the post show. We were doing like the wraparound the next day. And um, that was also his, he hadn't taken wickets before. Yeah, that so was that just was, the third game. Yes. That was not only his maiden ODI wicket, it ended up being his maiden <laughs> five wicket haul. So it was just... Yeah. All these numbers and these stats and these figures were being thrown at us. And at that time, of course, we know well in advance because it's broadcasters. They tell you that this is about to break Anil Kumble's record. Because Stuart had absolutely no clue when he happily walked out for the presentation. He's just thinking, wow, I got my first week in. Yes, it ended up being six. You know, this is really cool. And they're like, Stuart, by the way, do you know that you've done this? You know, it's a, it, 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 it's Anil Kumble's record. So it was... Uh, I, and I had to downplay it, Sony. I had to act like really normal, like... It wasn't my husband who just did this. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, that was good bowling from Stuart Binney. <laughs> you know, I had to come to yes. Well, that's what I was going to ask you good. next. <laughs> this is what I was going to ask you. And I know a lot of people, especially those in the know in India on broadcast, because I did mm -hmm. the first time I met you and I worked with you. I know who you are and I know who your husband is. And yeah. I'm always thinking, what must that be like? actually talking, trying to talk down, because you must be there absolutely buzzing. Six for four, and you're thinking, this is brilliant. You want to be punching the air and jumping up and down. Yeah. But as the uber professional presenter that you are, you have to, like, it's just another it's just another bloke out there taking those wickets. Yeah. Good old India. The team results the important thing, when we all know that that's rubbish. How hard is that for you to do? <laughs> it, it's hard because it's... So, um, Stuart is way more romantic than I am, okay? And if he, when he got his fifth, he actually kissed his wedding ring. Terry's agreed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he kissed the wedding ring, okay? And that was like a subtle little message to me and I didn't get it. Like other people had like, oh my, he's done that kiss for you. I'm like, wait, let me see it again. They're like, look at that, he's kissed that. And you know, Stu's like, babe, babe, did you see that celebration was for you? And I was like, she oh, had no idea. idea. I had to, we had to watch the highlights <laughs> for her to get to know I did it. So, so everyone else really well, needs I'm to be Well, I'm not surprised to hear that. <laughs> All men are the same. I mean, Stuart, I'm with you on that. The first time my wife ever watched me play, mm -hmm. I think I've told you before, 
I got 60 odd and five wickets and she thought I was Samit Patel when I left the field. She couldn't tell which one I was. He's Indian, a foot shorter than me and fat as a house. And she thought that I was him. So it's, it's typical. We make all these big gestures and get nothing in return, Stuart. Am I right? Yeah.